This is Captain Adam from Real to Real Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the Captain's Roundtable. Before we get started, we got to thank our great sponsors, Captain Chuck's 2, Ludington Beverage, and Bush Light. So let's meet the captains and get to the topic. Kevin Pomorski, I'm a captain of Feed and Time Charters out of Ludington. I'm Dennis Pumondin, uh, captain of Clocked Out Charters of Ludington. And I'm Alex Bialik of Fireplug Charters, uh, just a little bit farther north in Manistee. Water temps are right. You got good warm water stack, a strong thermal, fish are in relatively shallow water, and we're running J-plugs. And the kings are slamming them. What's your four plugs? What's, what's your go-tos? What's in the water? Who wants to go first? And then, and then for a fifth one, what's your swamp rat special? Oh. And it doesn't even have to be a plug. I just want to know what you're running, running the pond. Oh, I have that. So we swamp rat is, it. you got swamp rats too, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Man, Steve boy, you're going first? Yep. I'll go first. All right. Um, I'm running all chrome. Uh, red lips, what we call hot lips. Um, gonna run it. We call them chrome Big red heads. Okay. Everybody likes a redhead. And I'm gonna run that on an out and down, um, out in front of Masty, about 22 foot down. Oh, okay. Um, and I run my J plugs a little hotter than everybody else does. And I don't know if it's just I'm trying to pick up more aggressive fish or get out of the way of harbor bashing more than anything. Yeah. Um, so I'll start there, and then I'm going to run splatterbacks, um, typically uh, a green and the orange, what we call a firecracker. Um, and then I'm going to go an all glow, a bone. Um, and those three are going to be on board somewhere. Um, and like we mentioned before in earlier segments, um, down the chute, um, just as an oddball to attract fish closer to me, I'm going to run a paddle somewhere. With a fly. Um, You've been in the shallow water. Yeah, you know, just I, I draw something to you um, just because you are going over fish even 20 foot, 30 foot of water, so you don't want to spook them too much. Then Swamp Rat Special. Swamp Rat Special. Uh, I'm going to run a all, all chrome, all silver spoon off a two-ounce keel sinker straight out the back of the boat. Oh, yeah. That's like the that's like the mag, uh, yeah. We might go there. All right. We'll see if that leaks out. Absolutely. I like but, it. I like you know. I'm, but again, like I said, I'm running things at <clears throat> two eight three one. Yeah, going fast. Yeah. All right. That's good, Captain Denny. Fuzz. Okay. I uh, am a little bit different. We know. Uh, my number. <laughs> yeah, I agree. My number one plug for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure is a double glow. What I, what I think you call the a bone. A bone. Yep. All white double glow, captain's cut plug, on out and down is by far my favorite. Yep. And if I was running that on one out and down, the very next out and down would have the the double glow black ladder back. Um. Probably on a core, a high core, I would have a, um, oh, I don't know, either a green or a yellow splatter back. And then on another one, another core, I would probably have the ghost, which is kind of a, whatever, a glow with a, a faint black ladder back. And then, um, what are we calling it? The swamp rat? Swamp, swamp rat special. Swamp rat special. <laughs> If I was fishing in Pier Marquette Lake, because I do fish out of Lillington, what I have found is a mag, and I don't run a lot of mags, yeah. mag, dreamweaver, green glow, but there's a stipulation. You have to have somebody on the rigger, almost like lake trout fishing, and you have to keep it one foot off the of bottom at all times. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter where you're at. And lights out. I mean, that thing will catch fish. <laughs> it does. But you got to babysit it. You can't, you can't just set it at 24 foot and let it go. And hopefully it drags oh, over yeah. something. I mean, you got to have somebody there looking up at the graph, you know, doing this, you know, over 28, put it at 27. 
Are you guys like Mayo C where you have some slab docks in there too that you can oh, catch yeah, something yeah, if you don't? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, Mayo C's. We, we actually have a buddy of ours that you could talk to about slab docks. <laughs> 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 He'll remain nameless. <laughs> you know, you know. But we don't call him strong, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, yeah. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Captain Kevin, different Kevin. This is yeah, strong. Not Kevin the same. Here. All right. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, I would say uh, I would probably run a um, what is that? The Gray Ghost. Yeah. That's called. Yep. Uh, it's kind of got the bluish gray, faint ladder back on it. Um. I'd put that on a a high, maybe a half core, full core. Um, obviously, the I mean, you guys took all the good ones, <laughs> the easy stuff. So I'm trying to come up with something else. Uh, the green black ladder back. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Where did you put that? And and mind you, these are uh, these are cut plugs. They're not a regular J plug. Yeah. Yep. Um, they're the ones with the fixed, fixed harness. Fixed harness. Yep. <clears throat> also. I personally like to take the front hook off. It, yeah. Why do you do that? You ask a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was one. No. <laughs> um, I do that uh, to make it easier to take out of the net. Um, yeah. it, it, the hooks themselves don't get tangled up together. They don't get tangled in the net. It's like it's that just, trailer hook. It's just easier to in and out, get it, get it back in the water. Um, so taking that front hook off, uh, it, it, it works it makes a lot quicker. Nice. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, now that I lost. What my about your? I know that you like to run. Uh, I run a lot of number threes, yeah. the smaller silver hordes. Um, whether it be the pinky, the, the glow pink with the pink, pinky. with the pink uh, sides. Um, that in a cup plug as well, um, whether it's on a half core, full core, or a rigger. Um, and then, so that's three. I guess I'll just go to a, a Swamp Rat Sweat Special. And, <laughs> or no, I'd do a Chrome Redhead. A Chrome yeah. Redhead, number three. Mick number three. Oh, yeah. Number three. Um, and then my Swamp Rat special, since, you know, obviously some other ones were taken and whatnot. And, but uh, I would say I haven't fished PM Lake. That's our swamp for us here in, in Ludington. Um, I haven't fished that in quite a few years. But I would say a UV. Um, UV always worked good for me. Um, UV 10-inch yeah. flasher. Uh, purple sparkler was one of them. Yep. Um, and it had a UV, uh, purple UV, I think it was, uh, yeah, purple UV meat rig behind, behind it. it. And that was really good. Um, the yellow sparkler with a UV on ice was really good. Uh, any, any of those UVs work really good in that dirty water. Yep. Yep. No, I can, I, I can agree with that for sure you were sitting right with me a couple of times yeah, i was <laughs> uh so all right so my now that most of the most of them are taken um i run a lot of number threes uh silver hordes um i like the um chrome chrome no redhead on it i like the all chrome i run that kind of all over the place um generally not in the dark or that sort of thing. I have ran it at night and left it out and had it go, right. you know, in the dark. But I, I don't think that I'd make a habit out of that. Um, I like the the number three with the green dots. So it's a double glow with green dots on it. Um, that one's good on a upper core, seven color, five color, three color, whatever. Um, Wonder Bread is one of my go-tos. And it's usually the um, captain's choice, uh, Dreamweaver plug. And that's on an out and down, usually... You know, it, most of the time, pinky, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, you guys kind of like, I got to quit going last. This is hard when you go last. <laughs> right. um, and the, But Swamp Rat Special, like, <laughs> I think. Swamp Rat Special. It's got to, I mean, meat rigs work in the swamp. They, do. they really yep. do. Oh, they do. And I don't, I, 
you know, it's not something like I stumbled across right away. Um, you know, Kevin, I saw it with him, and then I tried lots of other meat rigs, and a lot of the meat rigs I was using in the lake worked. Surprisingly, a lot of chrome, mm-hmm. um, which kind of didn't make a lot of sense to me, but maybe, you know, just the water being, we have a lot of tannin in there, and in, in, in our river, Peter, the Pierre Marquette, so the water's always stained in there. Especially that time of year. Especially. Um, but I like the... I like the, you know, number three chromes. I like the Ace High cr- chrome plugs too. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's kind of that would be my, you know, go, ones you know. we and none of us really mentioned. Um, we call them like lightning plugs, the green lightning, oh, yeah. um, stuff like that. That's always kind of a go-to. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, then they call them the zombie. That Michigan Shiner, remember that oh, one yeah. mm-hmm. with the little yep. chrome Yellow. sticker on the side. Is that yeah. what it's called? I think it Michigan is. Michigan Shiner, yeah. Michigan okay. Shiner, that's the Dreamweaver plug. Yep. That's yellow good. and green. Yeah, that's a good one. With like a yep. hollow inside. Hollow on the on the sides. I used to run a lot of the Atomic plugs. Um, I really liked those, but they're really hard to find anymore. Yeah. But good plugs. Yep. But even just those the old pearls, you know, those were those are fairly solid plugs. Oh, Zebra. Limons? Remember Limons? Zebra? Or uh, or uh, what was the one that looked like a lightning strike down the back of it? It was a double glow with the like lightning tape on it. Yeah. Well, no, it was a black lightning strike down the side of it, down the back of it. Oh yeah, but I don't remember what it was called. I don't know what it was mm-hmm. called. Oh, that was a good one. That's a good one too. Yeah. Well, I I think you know we get our king plants back where they should be, and uh, it'll, it'll change. I think the plugs will take off again. Oh yeah, especially uh-huh. that shallow water. Fish when there. those, what do you remember the Lyman plugs? Oh yeah, came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. When it was just unbelievable. And those were balsa. Yeah, yep. they're all and, huge cut in their face, and they work so good. But, I mean, you gotta go slow though. Yeah. The only problem with them is those big kings would just tear, tear them up. up. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know that's we can kind of run the same thing back. And I go from spring running rapals along the beach for browns and stuff like that, and then you try to run them. Because you have kings in the spring eating them, and you try to run rapalas in the in the fall, yeah. just because they work and they just they don't stand up. And so, I'll give you something that I've done for years, and I've actually done it in the pond, and I haven't been as successful in the pond with it. But it um it's a thunder stick, a uh, regular bill thunder stick, full mm-hmm. si- full size. It's that glow glow descent, I think they call yep. it, with a green ladder back on it. Yep, that is a killer king bait. And it's good in the spring, and it's good in the fall. And they're speed tolerant, just like most of these plugs are. Besides the cut ones, like we're knocking them up. But you gotta beef the hooks up. Some good VMCs, you know, like some two Xers or yeah, whatever. I believe they went to VMCs, but they're not strong enough for they're not strong they're for a king. Yeah, you need yeah. like a two X, like a. And yep. then when you do that, change the the um, split rings too. Yeah, but don't go too crazy. Uh, because you can actually tear the wire right out of the <laughs> right out of that bait, but those really do hold up quite well. So, just for uh, people that personally, I think are trying to learn from watching this stuff too. Sure. Um, what or what would you recommend for like a lead core stuff like that for people that are trying to fish what we call our our little lakes like PM and Manistee and Muskegon, well, um, all the way up to the pierheads? I think that um, yeah, I, I, you can't get too long. You know, I, if you wanted something that's going to fish 20 feet down, you might be better off doing like a 75 copper. Um, you do a five color, you know, you're 50 yards long, so you're 150 feet behind your boat, and you really just don't have that kind of space. Of um, boats. Of boats. You know, yeah. be courteous of each other. If you're going to run a board, one board aside or something, if you have to move it, move it. Yeah. Don't expect somebody to work around your board. Yeah. Um, you know, but be, but I, Five, you know, three color down the chute is a killer rig in there. Or don't put it on a board. Right yeah, just run it bow. right yep. in off the corners. So you can just you got to pull it. That you way, know, if you got to pull it. You just yeah. I mean, you you get bit on your out and down or whatever. You got to pull it. You can't you can't leave it there. But you know, you got to look out for other people. And now it, there's a lot of people jigging, and um, it's hard to get a path through. And and then you got to worry about anchor lines. Quite often, especially with planer boards and anchor lines, tend to meet. Yeah. You know, a yeah, lot. Not good. Yeah, yeah. It's not usually a good thing. 
So um, I like slide divers, you know, no. when I'm swamping. No, it's a good way to stay courteous, too, like we we're talking about. You got line back there, but it's so it's tucked close to the boat enough yeah. that you're okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, everybody has to work together, and you all have to give a little bit. And you, you and, and the, the jiggers, too. You know, I mean, if you're going to anchor up, you know, leave a, leave one path, leave the, leave something to get through there. Yeah, I mean, even when I'm on the yeah. pier heads, I'm, you know, in, in Manistee, I'm starting to see more and more people are starting to jig in our harbors and outside the yeah. mouth and stuff like that. You know, it's, again, back to what I said at the beginning of all this, pressured fish are going to slide out somewhere. Sure. So don't be scared to go away from the pack just to find fish. Yeah. Um, you know, and mark those fish because most of the time, most of the time, those fish aren't going to move. Well, oftentimes, if you're fishing the pier heads and you know the the bite slows down, uh, I mean, the fish they either went in or out, mm -hmm. and oftentimes they go out. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it's not uncommon. Um, so yeah, but be courteous of each other, yeah, especially when you're it's tight quarters and you know, if you I got. Bet. If you're going to run a lot of rods, you got to be willing to pull absolutely right. your stuff and get it out of people's way. So, well, anyways, I hope that uh, you got some good information out of this. Um, you know, check these guys out; they all run fantastic charter services in uh, Manistee and Ludington, and and uh, they're good friends. And we had, we had a good time. I hope you uh, enjoyed. Uh, make sure that you hit the bell, the bell notification, the, the notification, and then when we post a new video. Uh, you'll get notified about that. But uh, click subscribe, click like to the video. Please, you know, share our stuff. We're just trying to get good information out from good fishermen. So great talking to you guys and cheers. Cheers. cheers.